Hey, it's me, LaShonda Henry here, creator of SisterSense.com and .tv, the place where you need to be to learn my money and marketing strategies. So good morning. <laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Now is the time for us to talk about what you should be doing right now in your online business. So this to-do list that I have for you today is actually, it came out of my time at Blogalicious 2011. If you do not know what Blogalicious is, this is a conference that they have every year now. I think it's three or four years in the making. And essentially, it's all about celebrating the diversity of women and women of color and men of color and just the diversity when the it's in the blogging community. So um, I absolutely love Blogalicious. This is my second year going and, you know, just listening to the different panelists. I actually spoke as a panelist myself um, and, and taking part in all the networking opportunities there. I just came up with this list of so many wonderful things that I actually need to start doing myself. And you know that whatever I practice, I preach. So I am now here to tell you, these are some things that you need to think about. And these are some things that you should be doing as well. So, all right, jumping right into number one, developing a book. So hopefully you had a chance to listen to my Sister Sense Power Circle that I did a couple of months ago. I had some of my amazing, you know, fabulous, entrepreneurial, successful friends come on and talk about the different things that you need to know as far as building your brand and building your wealth. One of those people was the wonderful Pam Perry. And Pam talked about why it was so necessary for entrepreneurs to have a book. It doesn't matter what you're doing across the board, across industries, you need to have a book. And by the way, if you want to check that out, uh, you can go to power.sistersense.com to listen to the nine audio sessions that we did in the Power Circle. So anyway, I noticed as as I have several ebooks and I've actually self self published books in the past, but I noticed that just about every successful panelist, keynote speaker that was up there had a book and they leveraged their books on so many different levels to get the opportunities to speak, opportunities to um, be authorities and experts on television or opportunities to monetize their websites or blogs in new ways. And so I'm actually kind of, that lit the fire up under me to, you know, also transition and go from the eBooks and self-publishing to now thinking about a new book that I want to develop for myself. So here are a couple of things to keep in mind. As I mentioned before, the significance of having something tangible like a book is something that you can leverage so you can share what you know, your content, your experience, everything that you've been working on thus far, and then use that in different ways to de um, develop exposure or credibility, etc. right? So some things that came out of that were people were actually talking about self-publishing versus publishing. And obviously, if you have a community and you have an established following, it's a good idea to do self-publishing because for, for starters, uh, when you're self-publishing, you get to keep the majority of the sales that come in outside of the expense that you obviously have of getting the books to be put together and printed, um, the majority of that money comes back to you. And of course, if you have a following, you already have an existing client base to sell those books to. Now, granted, other people talked about publishing, and I'm actually interested in looking into publishing now because I've done a lot of stuff on my own. Um, some of the advantages of working with a publishing company is you don't have to worry about the printing process or what you need to do to get your book in Barnes & Nobles or Amazon because of, obviously, the, um, the publishing company takes care of that. Um, but of course, the downside is that you may not get um, as much of the revenue per book, but that exposure, it can go a long way as far as developing you and your brand in, in the long run. So um, it's definitely important to think about having a book, also thinking about just across the board that you need some sort of tangible product if you want to take your blog or your business to the next level, something that people can see, uh, utilize, and um, take advantage of so that you're building and you're growing and you have something to offer. So that's number one. Number two, FaceTime and phone time. Now, I had the, the pleasure of seeing and reconnecting with a a lot of people, one of which was Artesthesia Deal, one of the wonderful women who are currently taking part in the Sister Sense Circle. And 
while we were there, we had a chance to talk about a lot of different things. And what was interesting is she had the opportunity to connect with one of her potential clients while she was there. And that is a good thing because you want to have some face time with the people that you're working with. You want to talk about business. You want to talk about what they need, what you need, and how you can work together. So that face time, I think, is invaluable. And I personally even had the opportunity to reconnect with one of the sisters in my circle. And, and you know, it, for our relationship at the time, it wasn't enough to either send out an email. And in some cases, it wasn't enough to, uh, for us to be on the phone. We really needed to see each other face to face, sit down and talk about the things that were important for our particular relationship. So I really stress the importance of FaceTime. If you have the opportunity to either meet with peers or meet with clients, definitely do that as often as possible. You don't know, it just a glance, a look, a handshake can transform the conversation in a way and get things moving in a way that you couldn't have possibly done if you just sent out one email. Also keeping in mind that if you cannot do FaceTime, definitely make it a point to have some phone conversations with people. I feel that especially, well, if you're listening to this now and this is, you know, nearing the end of the year, you're thinking about what can I do to connect with people on a deep, deeper level? Sending out those e-blasts, especially when more and more people are becoming entrepreneurial and sending out e-blasts and it's just overwhelming more and more. You really want to think about all of the ways you have to have as many one-on-one -on -one personable relationship building conversations with people as possible. So again, think about that phone time and think about that FaceTime. And, and let me give you an example of that. Right now, I actually have a specific project that I'm working on, which I will be reconnecting with several clients in my larger Sister Sense community, but just for this particular project. And so I have a list of people that I will individually send them out personal emails. So those emails will include their name and this is what we we talked about before and you know I want to follow up with you so we can talk about XYZ so again one creating that small list two sending out personal emails and then three really I'm sending out those emails so that we can schedule a call and talk and in some cases we can meet because right now I'm actually doing my sister sense socials where I'm having meetups and mixers in North Carolina because again the FaceTime and the phone time right now is really important especially for those of you out there who are trying to figure out how do I stand out you know everybody's doing the same thing that I'm doing really finding the most effective ways to connect with people on a deeper level, that's the key right now, okay? So number three is become a thought leader. And this is a big one because, again, there's a lot of competition, and if you want to stand out, you have to be innovative and as creative as possible. So I'm going to talk about Artesthesia a little bit more. Um, I love the evolution. Artesthesia has been in my sister send circle, wow, for a couple of months now. And, um, you know, we've talked about a lot of different things, but even outside of the circle, she's just implementing. She's taking advantage of so many different resources so that she can get the best information to move forward. So one of the things that I've noticed and that we talked about while we were at Blagalicious was her blog moving in a different direction. She is a web designer, but now she's doing a lot more to share her expertise as a freelance entrepreneur to others who are in the freelance arena. So she's becoming a thought leader. She's not just selling a service. She's not just creating a product. She is becoming a thought leader and an expert, which is something she can leverage on so many different levels. And that's something that I've been doing for a long time, as you know, as a blogger on Sister Sense and just sharing my information being a thought leader for entrepreneurs who want to start up in ways similar to myself. That's something that I want you to think about for your industry. Outside of the products you sell or even the services you sell, how can you become a thought leader? So one of the sessions at Blogalysis was led by Lamar Tyler. He had a panel, um, I believe Shauna was there and Tara Pringle from Young Mommy Life. They, It was just a wonderful session all about how to create kick-ass content and one of the things they talked about was one the value of writing so as a thought leader if you're going to use your blog for example as a space to share information and show people how to do something that is valuable now Shauna she has a show 
And um, wow, her website escapes me at the moment, but I'm definitely Coco Mode. There you go. Good. <laughs> Shauna has a show, Coco Mode, and I believe you can go to CocoMode.com. And she specializes in radio. She actually also is on Sirius Radio as well. So she talked about how you can use radio, whether it be local radio stations or satellite radio or even internet radio as a as a platform for you and for your voice, okay? So you can think about radio and, and uh, that being in the audio world. So you can think about blogging, that's writing. Um, and Tara talked about specifically writing. And Lamar, of course, he talked about video and how you can get into video and use that as a platform to connect with people online and in so many different ways. So number three, you want to become a thought leader and think about one which of these three platforms, whether it be audio, video, or writing, you want to use to get your voice out there to as many people as possible, okay? So number four, this is actually in line with the panel that I did with Pam Perry. We did a wonderful panel, and it was my first time actually getting offline, <laughs> getting offline, and doing a, a actual speaking event of this nature. So I was really excited and felt blessed about that. So Pam and I, we did a session on how you can leverage the content on your blog to monetize it and start generating money. Now, we started the conversation talking about the three A's versus the big C. And no, I'm not doing alphabets. <laughs> the three A's being AdSense, affiliate marketing, and advertisers. Most people, when they think about monetizing, those are the things that they come to them first. You know, they think, okay, well, I want to monetize my blog, so I'm going to start with AdSense, maybe see if I can get some advertisers and see if there are a couple of affiliate programs that I can join. Now, while these things can be lucrative, and in the conversation I talked about last year, how I made about $15,000 from AdSense alone, but keeping in mind that I have over 15 web properties online, and I've got social networks and blogs and all of these things bringing in consistent traffic to make money for me over time. But when you're starting out, you definitely don't want to listen to people who go, yeah, you can make $10,000 a month with AdSense and you only have 10 people reading your blog because it's not realistic. Nor do you want to listen to those people who were just kind of lucky fly by night. All of a sudden they started a blog and then they were on CNN or ABC or Fox and then they just kind of blew up because how they started is not a reflection of how you're starting out, right? But I, as I always say, I started out on a shoestring budget and when I was on MySpace, I had one friend and that was Tom. So if you're old school and you know MySpace, you know Tom. When I started my blog, I had one reader and that was me. And I built that over time so I can really talk about how to grow organically. So, okay, I'm not gonna get into the three A's, the advertising, the AdSense, and if you have questions about that, definitely let me know. Um, I believe if you go to talk or talks.sistersense.com, you might be able to find that audio series that I did on Google AdSense and I talk about how I, I made sense of making money with AdSense. But the idea here, what I focused on in the session is really about the big C versus the three A's and the big C being your content, the stuff that you know, you live, drink, breathe. It's all that. It's, it's really where your skill set lies. That's your content. That's where your control is going to be because essentially when it comes to you generating money and you monetizing your space, when you can leverage your content and make money from it, you are in control. You're not waiting for AdSense. You're not waiting for traffic. You're not waiting for advertisers. You're not waiting for an affiliate check. When you have content and you turn that content into money, that is something that you have and you control for as long as as you want. I believe it's, I like to call it anyway, unlimited profit potential versus the limitations that are set on you when you're waiting for money from other people. So let me just kind of go over the five most common types of information products that you can create so you can get a sense of what you need to know as far as turning that content that you have into money. And then I'm going to talk about some of the uh, amazing other things that you should be doing right now. Um, as far as I think it's, I've got 27 things that I want to talk to you about and we're on number four. So <laughs> some of the amazing other things. Okay. So money monetization.